So the Echelon 1 study was a large randomized uh, study, including more than 1,300 patients with stage 3 or stage 4 Hodgkin lymphoma, which uh, ended uh, accrual a long time ago. So what was presented here at the EHA meeting was the uh, five-year update of patients treated on this study. Five years after the completion of treatment for advanced stage Hodgkin lymphoma is a point in time when you expect the vast, vast, vast majority of relapses to have occurred. So that means that if you are alive and progression-free at five years, it almost invariably means that you're cured. So clinically, really a meaningful point in time to do uh, an update of uh, this first-line study. So the study was a randomization between standard treatment with ABVD, which is a backbone therapy in advanced stage Hodgkin lymphoma, has been for decades, and the experimental arm, which was A plus ABD, essentially uh, ABVD with the omission of bleomycin and with the addition of brintuximapidotin, which uh, was all already registered and approved for the treatment of relapsed refractory disease, uh, Hodgkin lymphoma. So um, already the primary analysis of this study showed a, a, an advantage uh, in favor of the experimental arm, which was after approximately two years of median follow-up. So now we have five years of follow-up. And what is found essentially is that the progression-free survival, as judged by the investigators, still... Um, uh, is in favor of the experimental arm with a roughly 7% difference in favor of the experimental arm, 82 versus 75% uh, of five-year uh, progression-free survival. So this difference is being maintained, perhaps even uh, uh, getting a little bit larger with time. So that means that roughly uh, there's a 30% reduction in the in the risk of failing first-line therapy with the experimental arm as compared to the standard uh, ABVD arm. So this is one interesting thing, not a great surprise. We've seen the same PFS difference in updates after three and four years of uh, median follow-up. Uh, what is really new is also uh, an analysis of some of the side effects after treatment. One prominent side effect of brintuximab bedotin is sensory uh, peripheral neuropathy and also motor neuropathy. Um, and this certainly is something which occurs uh, with higher frequency and higher severity in the experimental arm than in the standard arm, even though it's also a problem in the standard arm, uh, despite the absence of brintuximab bedotin. So what is being what is seen after five years is a, a continued improvement of uh, peripheral neuropathy in those patients who, who had that problem during or after therapy. So patients uh, continue to uh, experience complete resolution of their neuropathy symptoms, and those who still have remaining symptoms generally experience improvement of those symptoms, which is really encouraging um, uh, that, that these symptoms can get better even after three, four, and now five years of follow-up. Also, uh, the abstract and the presentation gave data on uh, other side effects, one uh, that have not been uh, uh, presented uh, in the previous updates from this study. One is on secondary malignancies. There are second, second or secondary malignancies have been recorded in patients in both treatment arms, but it's uh, clear that uh, there is uh, certainly not a higher rate of secondary malignancies in the uh, experimental arm, uh, even though there's no statistical analysis per se, 19 uh, second malignancies in the experimental arm versus 29 in the standard arm. So certainly if there is a difference, it's in favor of the experimental arm, but we can't say that there's a true difference, but certainly there's no difference in, uh, in uh, favor of the standard arm. And then the last important analysis is an analysis of uh, fertility and uh, successful pregnancies. And in this analysis, uh, we see that there is a no difference uh, to be recorded either. Uh, actually, there are, uh, in, in actual numbers, more uh, pregnancies of female patients and, and pregnancies and newborn babies of partners of, uh, um, of male patients, female partners of male patients. So also here, it's encouraging to see that, um, that A plus ABD does not harm fertility in those patients. It's already well known that ABVD can be given to young uh, female and male patients without compromising fertility uh, significantly. But this is uh, uh, now shown to be also the case for A plus ABD, which is really encouraging since it's a new standard of care for the treatment of advanced stage Hodgkin lymphoma.